Hello and welcome to this installment of Making Sense. I'm Justin Gutwein and we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right into our main topic, CDPs. Recently, the term CDP has become more and more prevalent in the B2B space, leading many marketers to that awkward moment at a cocktail reception where they kind of have to play along by saying something like, oh yeah, our CDP is next gen. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we've really nailed it. Uh, will you excuse me for just a moment? And then running to the restroom to frantically Google what is a CDP, and then hopefully finding this video. So this one goes out to all the people wearing their AirPods in a restroom stall, wishing I'd just get to the point. CDP stands for Customer Data Platform. It essentially takes all of a person's interactions with a brand, whether that's through social media, in a retail shop, on your website, even if it's screaming at someone in a call center because you ordered light blue and not blue blue pants, all of those touch points that are normally spread across multiple tools and systems all flow into a single data warehouse, giving the company a 360 degree view of a customer or even a prospective customer if they have made themselves known. This allows brands to better target advertising and promotional efforts with personalized communications and offers based on real buyer behavior. So simple enough, right? Now a B2B CDP takes that same concept up to an account level. So it's great to know that Susan in Accounting has downloaded your ebook and subscribed to your newsletter, but it's even better to know that Doug in Finance and Joan in Marketing have taken similar actions. It's kind of like rye, bitter, sugar, absinthe, and a lemon peel. Separately, some are much more useful than others, but put them together the right way, and life is pretty good. And it's that complexity of a B2B sales cycle that makes enterprise CDPs such an invaluable tool for B2B selling. And with the right CDP, B2B revenue teams can do a much better job of mapping customer journeys, personalizing communications, cross-selling, upselling, and even preventing customer churn. Now, there are a lot of options out there for standalone CDPs. Basically, a CDP that you still need to integrate with other systems, meaning that you still need to get the data engineers involved to get it set up and have your existing data moved over, which can take a long time and be very costly. Not to mention that there's a lack of historical data, but we'll get to that in just a moment. And this brings us to the concept of an embedded CDP. An embedded CDP brings in not just the known first party data, but layers that data with anonymous first party and third party keyword data. So what does that mean? Well, every kind of CDP collects historical and ongoing activity data from multiple disparate systems, meaning that you need that history to make it valuable. Much like the pet rock, without the backstory, it's just a useless lump. So when you buy a standalone CDP, you're essentially starting from scratch. The more data you collect over time, the smarter the system becomes because it's learning from repeat buying patterns in the data. Now, Sixth Sense comes with the embedded CDP which means our CDP is pre-populated with more than 2.6 billion activities. We've analyzed more than 22 million opportunities and we're actually adding more than 16,000 new opportunities every single day. This means that instead of waiting for years before your CDP starts providing you value, you can hit the ground running, which in turn means within 24 hours of turning it on, you can begin to de-anonymize accounts, allowing you to know what companies are looking for your solution even if they've not identified themselves yet. So I hope that this has been helpful and that you now have the knowledge and confidence to exit that bathroom stall, rejoin the conversation, and watch people react with awe as you drop embedded CDP casually into the conversation. I'm Justin Gutwein. Cheers.